NFL teams send you messages all the time. You just have to pay attention. Mitch Trubisky has thrown 80 passes in four games. Chicago's sending you a message. He's young. He's raw. We don't really trust him yet. Uh, Bill Belichick is sending you messages, too. Yesterday, they traded Jimmy Garoppolo, a franchise quarterback, for a second-round pick. That's it. A second-round pick only has about 40% chance of being a high-end starter in this league. They could have gotten more. So let's look at what Belichick has done. He traded quarterback Jacoby Brissett for a wide receiver who was considered sort of a bust. Could he get more? Yeah. But the Colts GM is Chris Ballard, a friend of Andy Reid, who Belichick likes. They make the deal. Belichick trades quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo for a second-round pick. Could they have gotten more? Absolutely. Who's San Francisco's head coach, Kyle Shanahan, son of Mike Shanahan, who Belichick respects? This is what presidents do, folks. They pardon people. On the way out, they take care of their friends. Andy Reid, Mike Shanahan, friends of Belichick. He just pardoned them. He did him a solid. Bill is telling you, I've not only hit the turn, I'm on the last couple of holes of this golf course. We now officially have no succession plan for Tom Brady. Bill is telling you I have worked with Bob Kraft and Tom Brady, and when you stay at a Ritz-Carlton, a Hilton just won't do. His legend is set. Players now have bigger opinions, encouraged to give them. Maybe Belichick sees the turning of the league. Tom is playing at a level that he can finish this year at least one more year. Have you noticed in recent years, Bill is no longer really interested in developing young players. They drafted four guys total. Now they're giving up more picks, giving up a backup quarterback. This league is all about messages. And Bill Belichick sent you one yesterday. I'm leaving with Tom Brady when he leaves, probably either at the end of next year or the year after that. They were not going to franchise Garoppolo. That's not what New England does. They fished around the league. They were not going to send him to the AFC. Bill didn't want to get burned by potentially a kid who he thinks is good. But why did they give Brissett away for a wide receiver considered a bust in Indy? Why would you give Jimmy Garoppolo away for a second-round pick? Statistically, only 40% chance to be a high-end starter. That's pardoning people. That's given Mike Shanahan's son, Kyle, a solid. That's taken care of Andy Reid's guy, Chris Ballard. Last couple of years, Belichick, I'm not really into developing players. That was a message. It is obvious. Brady and Belichick, they're going to leave together. And Boston, you're not going to beat LeBron in the East. You Red Sox fans, you're not going to beat Aaron Judge, Sanchez, and all those good prospects with the Yankees. I don't care much about the Bruins. But Patriot fans, get ready. Because this parade, you can see the end of it now. It's been nothing but balloons and fun and laughs. Everybody wins. The end is near. Now, maybe it's two years. Maybe it's three. But this isn't about making the turn. Bill and Tom or on the last couple of holes. So that Jimmy Garoppolo move, it affected a lot of teams, uh, including USC football, because uh, if I'm Sam Darnold, I'm not going to Cleveland, because San Francisco now has their quarterback, and they're going to have the number two pick. Um, but it, it, this is what I really like. Uh, I predicted this year the L.A. Rams were one of two teams I thought could double their win total, the other being Carolina, and I think both will, actually. Uh, but the Rams have been the surprise of the league. I believe the San Francisco 49ers – uh, will now be the Rams next year. Uh, not just doubling their win total, they'll be a borderline playoff team. I really believe this. I think Kyle Shanahan's a great coach. I love what the Niners are doing. They get Garoppolo in now, let him know, learn the system for uh, uh, you know half the year, 
then they can use that number one or number two pick to acquire multiple pieces. I love what Kyle Shanahan's doing in John Lynch. They got a ton of cap space. They can kick the tires on Garoppolo. Shanahan, Kyle liked him a lot out of college. We found that out. And San Francisco now is the first team out of the blocks in the search for the next quarterback. There's about three teams in this league, four teams that need a quarterback, and San Francisco said, let's let's kick the tires here on Garoppolo. Let's see if he's as good as we think he is. And if he's not, we'll go get a Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen. We'll get somebody out of college. But we think he's good enough. Let's get a jump on all these teams so we're not starting like the Bears with Mitch Trubisky this year. Let's get Garoppolo in. Let's learn our system. Let's give him an offseason. I mean, he may only start four or five games this year, but let's get him in, learn the system, get a jump on all these teams. And I also believe a big part of this. Remember last Monday Night Football? I was told this years ago that Monday Night Football is the one football game in the NFL that everybody watches. Even the Sunday Night game, some teams are flying back home. Not everybody, not every coaching staff sees the Sunday Night Football game. They're flying home from road games. They're watching film. Monday Night Football is in every office. It's a standalone game. Kirk Cousins, who the Niners, everybody said was interested in, went up against Carson Wentz and looked completely outmanned physically. He's now 0 for 6 in Monday Night Football games. Kirk Cousins is a nice middle-of-the-road franchise quarterback. But do you think it's a coincidence a week after he was juxtaposed against Carson Wentz, it was very clear who's a world-class quarterback and who's a guy? Do you, do you think it's just a coincidence a week after that Monday Night Football game when Kirk Cousins lost again in a standalone game when everybody's watching and San Francisco, who reportedly loved Cousins, were out? Let's get Garoppolo. I think that's a big part of it. I love what San Francisco is doing. By the way, they had a great draft. Their top three picks in the draft this year, defensive linemen, linebacker, and cornerback are all starting and playing well. Uh, It should also be noted they have, in the first three rounds next year, they have four picks, and now they have the ability to trade that number one or two pick and get another handful of picks. So I believe the San Francisco 49ers are going to be the Rams of next year. Um, let, let, Let me also address this, is that the NFL sends messages. And you have to pay attention, but they send messages. And the one I told you about five minutes ago, the Chicago Bears, Mitch Trubisky. He's thrown 80 pass attempts in four games. The coaching staff is telling you, yeah, we don't have a lot of trust yet. Um, Carolina has two huge wide receivers and a 6'6 tight end, Greg Olson. What are they telling you? Cam's not terribly accurate. We need big receivers with large catching radiuses. Because as Greg Cosell has told us many times, the Carolina coaches know the truth is Cam's not really a precision thrower. The ball's off. They sail. We have big, long receivers. The San Francisco 49ers sent you a message yesterday. We watch Kirk Cousins. We just don't want to build around him in the NFC. We've got too many good quarterbacks. Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Carson Wentz, Dak Prescott. We think Kirk Cousins is just a guy and Garoppolo could be better. Uh, Belichick sent you a message yesterday. I'm going down with Tom Brady. That's how I'm ending my career. I've stayed at a Ritz. I'm not going to a Hilton. Uh, The Dallas Cowboys have been sending a message this year. They've been resting Darren McFadden, the running back. They could could use him. They haven't. They're resting him. Why? Because they know Ezekiel Elliott probably going to get suspended for six games. And I'm watching Denver last night. And I'm watching Denver play the Kansas City Chiefs. And they're sending you a message, too. Paxton Lynch... You watch how good Deshaun Watson is just coming right out of the gate. Paxton Lynch couldn't get on the field last year. Paxton Lynch can't separate from Trevor Simeon. Denver's telling you that thing's not as good as they thought. How long do you think it would have taken Carson Wentz and Deshaun Watson to separate in camp from Trevor Simeon? Two hours is the over-under. I'll take the under. Two hours. Paxton Lynch couldn't get on the field last year. Now, he's been banged up this year, but you're watching Trevor Simeon. You know what Denver's seeing in practice, right, with Trevor Simeon? They're not stupid. This Denver defense is as good as the one that won the Super Bowl. Maybe better. 
But, you know, there's a lot of things where, um, you know, I'll tell you the Philadelphia Eagles sent you a little bit of a message this morning by acquiring Jay Ajay, the running back from Miami. Now they've got LeGarrette Blunt and Jay Ajay, two downhill, tough, physical, kind of all-purpose running backs. Weather's a non-factor. They're big. They're strong, physical running backs. They're telling you, we're all in. This is a playoff move. We want to take some of the burden off Carson Wentz. We're not going to be as good at left tackle. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from the newest show on FS1. First Things First with Chris Carter and Nick Wright.